Last night, I received a message from a pastor in a place called Kisi in Kenya. She said to me, these are powerful teachings I will teach my church too. This statement uh, caused me to just to sit back for a moment and just to ponder, I guess, on my own journey, uh, but also uh, the purpose for why I went online in the first place uh, for the Lord with ministry uh, with a heart to teach the Word of God. So basically a year ago now, uh, I took a step of faith. I'd never been on social media before, but I went on social media and I started off on Facebook and I opened up a personal page. As soon as I opened up the page, I put a couple of posts up I put a few video clips up that I'd taken in Israel and I was swamped with over a, fa a thousand face requests. I couldn't fathom it, it was, it was quite extraordinary. Clearly the Lord's hand was on whatever that message was at the time. I quickly realised that this was going to be way beyond my personal page and I opened a ministry called the Jesus Movement. It grew and grew and after six months its members numbered 64,000 and my heart to share the word of the Lord was just overwhelmed with joy. It was all about faith. I simply took a step into the unknown. Unfortunately, the enemy was also on hand, and after six months, I was hacked and the platform was rendered useless. I was initially devastated, but rather than succumbing to defeat, I dusted myself off. I started all over again, and day by day to this very day, the Jesus movement continues to grow again. It became apparent whilst I was on this journey that in order to truly teach and reach out around the nations, it was necessary to start producing videos that were capable of being used by others to share and teach in a language that was simple, clear and to the point. When I first started, I had lots of people giving me advice. They were telling me it has to be done like this, it has to be done like that. But the problem was, is that it alluded to the fact that I was basically being told or groomed that it had to be a performance. And I wasn't interested in that. The Lord called me just to teach, simply teach. It doesn't matter how long it is. If people want to listen, they'll listen. If it's long and they don't have time, they can watch it on more than one occasion. The point is that the word of the Lord is the word of the Lord. And that was what I was called to do. So today... These videos on YouTube have sort of spoken for themselves. They've now been watched over 30,000 times and they're actually being used to teach others as individuals in groups such as Bible studies or life groups and even in churches around the world. It's just truly humbling to think that one step of faith can generate such a large ripple. Very inspiring. It inspires me still to this day. Every day I receive personal communication and feedback from people all over the world. They express their gratitude. They ask me to visit churches and conferences to speak. They ask me to set up Bible colleges. They ask me to be a director. They ask me to participate in many different ways. And usually, almost always, I get asked to provide resources uh, because there's such a hunger. So I'm doing my best. But here's the kicker. There's so much need in this world, a real hunger for Jesus and the gospel, that I despair when I see so many good people who want to do something to help, but don't know where to begin. I despair that the entity that we call the church often fails to provide practical, hands-on training to disciple and equip people to do God's work because they're so busy training people to serve the church. I understand that we need to serve our church, but the church needs to serve the community, not just those inside the walls, but those who are yet to come in. We are not here to form clubs. Jesus taught in the synagogues, but when I read my Bible, it seems apparent that he spent much more time outside amongst people in the community, teaching the lost whilst the Holy Spirit performed miracles through him to reveal both his uh, divinity to all that he encountered and also to show that there was a power 
a supernatural power that only comes from our Heavenly Father. He was crucified publicly and then he revealed himself publicly after he rose again. It only serves to show us that the purpose of the church was within him, the person, not in the premises he visited. I always recall when he went to the temple, his father's house, and he was so angry at the money changers that he flipped their tables over and cast their money everywhere, because this was not the purpose for which the temple was built. Leaders and pastors today must disciple and equip people to become apostles to go out. They must set forth. They must become the sent ones. It's not something that we should be doing to seek to find followers to fill seats in our churches when they're just sitting idle. I know that this message may anger some and it will challenge some, but so be it. Let it be a catalyst for action. Let it make people think about what it means to serve the Lord. I know myself, I've been a Christian for a long time, and I can't just sit on my hands and do nothing, nor should I be expected to. Today, many churches focus on sectors. You hear them say, oh, we focus on the youth. Oh, we're more orientated towards taking care of the elderly. Oh, we're a family church. Oh, we're part of the school. Or, you know, we're a, a, a church that uh, promotes entrepreneurs, teaching people how to make money for the kingdom. Or so they say. But you have to ask yourself, is this what church is about? Isn't church a place for all people? Doesn't the word community include all people? Isn't it a gathering place, the same as the synagogues of ancient where people did life together? Isn't it about relationship? Does your church look like a business? Does the need to produce income to serve outweigh serving the Lord with no income? Is the Holy Spirit bringing people to an anointed house of God or is it the domain of marketing, functions and events? Just have a look. Have a look at church schedules. We all need to learn. We all need to receive teaching. But there has to be a purpose and an outcome to it. Otherwise, we are only growing head knowledge. And in my own experience, I love it. It's enjoyable and it's wonderful. But it doesn't save lives. Jesus came to save lives. Are we doing the same? Faith requires action. Faith is not idle. Abraham was called the father of the faithful. Why? Because God called him from what he knew, and Abraham went out from there into what he didn't know. Would you be prepared to do the same? If you are walking with the Lord and in relationship with him, wouldn't you be doing everything? everything you can to serve him? And if not, shouldn't you be asking yourself why? Come on, people. Let's rise up and let's stand up. Let's not sit on social media anymore, whinging about the woes of the world and the society that lives in it. Let us unite and make a difference. Ask your pa pastor to disciple and equip you to make a difference. Let me ask you, how many hours this week did you spend serving the Lord? Yep, serving the Lord. How many hours? Take a moment and think to yourself, what have I been doing in my last week just to serve the Lord? Pastors, you need to disciple and equip your flocks. Let's not build strongholds, let's build fortresses. Let's build a worldwide army that goes out to conquer the world, not an army that's divided who only defends the walls of their stronghold. History tells us what happens when we do this. It is when the armies of God come to together that revival will happen. Just like armies from different nations unite together to overcome a common enemy that they can't overcome on their own. 
If nothing else, I pray that telling a little of my journey and challenging what our walk with the Lord looks like will inspire you to take a step of faith. It's not easy. I know. I carry many burdens in order to walk with the Lord and it can be very challenging to say the least. I find it frustrating that good and gifted people and pastors sit dormant in churches all over my country and all over the world. I find it frustrating that leaders become obsessed with building their church rather than God's kingdom. Why are churches always teaching that their way or their interpretation of the word of God is right at the expense of other churches? What is going on? Isn't the Bible God's word to us? I tell you what, the enemy must be really pleased. We have church division, we have pride, we have doctrine, we have dogma. And what does it do? It just separates us. There's not a day goes by in my ministry, and I've had one today from America, where people want to challenge this nitpicking of what we do, how we do it, etc. We have so much interpretation of the Bible rather than just doing as it tells us. We have people as Christians with a heart to divide and devour people. It sounds like the enemy to me. The Bible warns us about this. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Raising the banner of the Lord and yet destroying their very own people. What is going on? We are in a time that we need to guard ourselves. Our reverence must be for God and God only. We should not see one another as competition, nor should we see the pulpit in our churches as the domain of an individual, as I've so often heard. It is the place from where we share God's word. It is God whom we serve. Let me repeat. It is God whom we serve and no other. God sent his son so that you and I could come back into relationship with him. Jesus died on the cross for this and said that as believers, you and I are to obey his commands. All of us, every individual. So we do what Jesus asks us to do. Do you accept the Holy Spirit will work through you? You know, we're at a time where many of us need to examine our hearts. I mean, really, how do you expect to do church for the remainder of your life if the only thing that you do is sit on the sideline and be a spectator? You need to be in relationship. You need to pray. You need to read and know your Bible. You need to be discipling others. You need to be equipped so that you too can equip others. The Lord tells me that as his creation, as a man created in his image, that I am sufficiently made. That means that I can do all things in Christ, right? All things in Christ. Then if you agree, you don't need to change. You don't need to be like someone else. You just need to do. We are caught up in a performance mentality world at the moment. We set up stages in our churches and those who perform well get to be up front and those who don't seem to just sit on the sidelines. What is with that? Why aren't all people welcome? It's become a big issue. When we lead worship, we lead people to worship. We don't perform for them. We don't need to be the best performer in the room to lead worship. When we lead others, it's those who do the work, those who perform, those who participate. When we lead, 
it doesn't place us on top of the heap. This is a problem. I'm sure that when Jesus was walking with his disciples, he didn't keep telling them that they weren't able and they weren't good enough. In fact, he used to say, ye of little faith. He used to send them out at all times. He sent them out when they didn't feel that they were capable. When he went to Jerusalem, he sent 70 in front of him. They didn't have scholarly degrees. They hadn't spent years practicing to worship. They just went. Jesus knew that they wouldn't be perfect, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter because that's why he came. He came because we're not perfect. He came because he doesn't require us to be perfect because otherwise he would have come in vain. When do we actually accept this? When as brothers and sisters do we walk with each other rather than for someone? You know, it's incumbent on all men and women of God to disciple and equip others to do the same. Not for you as a person, but with you. We have to start walking together. I just pray that my point is abundantly clear. I encourage all people not to sit idle. In order to walk with God, your faith requires action. Church once a week does not constitute a walk with the Lord. Let me close by asking you, are you in 100%, as we say, boots and all? Let's remember, Jesus asks us to do this. We call it the Great Commission. We are to disciple, we are to baptize, and we are to teach. That was a call to each and every person who has received salvation. Is this something that you're doing? Is this something that you know how to do? Do you need discipling and equipping? If you do, then you need to do something about it. If you don't have someone in your life who's showing you and teaching you and helping you and walking with you to do this, then ask your pastor. I just pray and I just give thanks for the, to the Lord right now. There's not enough messages that we receive today which are really saying it like it is. My year that I've spent on social media, I've just watched endless posts, verses from the Bible with nice pictures, people liking them. We all do it. I do it. We have friends. We want to encourage them, and so we participate. It's all good. But you've got to ask yourself, does it make any difference? Or are we just pandering to our own club? Do we come together as like-minded believers and support each other in what we already agree with? I mean, it's all good fun, but what's the point? We need to do this. We need to encourage each other. But we've also got to do what the Lord asks us to do. And that requires us to get off our backside, get out of our comfort zone, and go out and do the Lord's work. You see, Jesus told us to do this. He also told us to go out until the four corners of the earth. That means all people in all countries, Jews, Gentiles, everybody. We can all make a difference. I don't know about you, but for me, I have one go at my life and I'm determined to make it count. I'm determined that I'm going to do something for the Lord that's worthwhile, that's going to make a difference in somebody's life and they're going to receive salvation and I'm going to see them in heaven and know that because I was obedient to what I was asked to do by the Lord, that I now have a friend who's also going to share everlasting life. Isn't that more important than anything else that's going on around you in this world? Don't we realize that all this material world one day, it just doesn't, it's just not going to matter. 
Now, in the last couple of years, I've lost both of my parents. It, it's hard. It's hard. You realize that what you know comes and goes. We have one go at this, people. You need to make sure that your life here on earth counts. You need to make sure that you have received salvation. And if you haven't yet, then you need to seek it with all of your heart. My Christian brothers and sisters, we need to unite. I've been through the ringer with churches. I've worked hard. I've been loyal. I've served my backside off. And yet when it comes crunch to a change of leadership, they wanted to use me, but I didn't count for nothing. It's sad, isn't it? This is what we call church. We lose friendships over it. We lose relationship over it. For those of us who have kids and family, it affects them. It affects the school. It affects our home life. All of these are issues for us. But I don't go through all of this to sit on my hands for however many more years the Lord has given me. I plan on doing a lot. If nothing else, I just want to be a voice for change. If nothing else, I want to challenge those around me to see me for who I am. I want people to realise that it is not okay that I sit on my hands after being obedient to the Lord for many, many years of my life, only to do nothing. As people, if we can't see that the people around us need to be helped in order that they too can do as we do, then there is something wrong. If I am so threatened as an individual that if I teach somebody else something, I'm worried that they're going to replace me or be more popular than me or whatever, then I'm just not walking with the Lord the right way. It's just time for people to wake up. You know, being on social media, I hated social media. I turned 55 soon and I've only been on it for the last year. And I know why I hated it. And I see it every day. It grieves my heart to see how people treat each other on social media. You see relationships play out. You see when people come in and out of favour by how many likes they get. You see people, pastors, commenting and having jovial uh, fun with people who are in the congregations but taking no notice of others. Not all, but it does go on. You see pointed messages encouraging people to, to come and join them. You see churches named after pastors. This is Pastor So-and-So's church. It's not, this is God's church, which is called this, which the senior pastor serves. We've gone the other way around. It's like, who's the flavour and the popular one of the month? Who's got the biggest congregation? I mean, what are we doing? Jesus must be just sitting up there, turning over, just going, what are they doing? I gave my life for this. It's time for us to change. It's time for us to lose our performance mentality. It's time for us as churches to stop dividing ourselves by believing that our message is better than someone else's. It's time that we actually give the Lord's message. We spend so much time in an intellectual space that we're failing to give context to the Bible and purpose to the teaching. So anyway, that's it from me. I just pray that this message has touched some hearts, perhaps made you think. But most of all, I'm just very passionate to see our Lord return. I'm very passionate for us to uphold Israel 
at the front and centre of our faith because it is Jerusalem, the capital, where the Lord will return. We must support what the Bible says. Our Bible is a total book, Old and New Testament, first and second book, call it what you like. But we most of all, we have to walk together. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross to bring us back into relationship. That's what it's about. Life is about relationship. When life is good, we're in a wonderful place in relationship with the Lord and with our friends and our families around us. When we're unhappy, it's usually because we're out of relationship in some way, shape or form. Unfortunately, when this happens, when we walk with the Lord, it's really disturbing because it can make us wonder what on earth is going on. But Jesus tells us, when we walk with him and for him, that we are going to be persecuted. We are going to suffer, and it's not going to be easy. So I can put up my hand and say, I understand that. That is my experience. But boy, oh boy, it doesn't stop me. When we walk with the Lord, the Lord tells us that we will be blessed. This doesn't mean that we are going to gain material, worldly wealth. This means that through the ups and downs, that the Lord will always, always be with us. So I'll just leave you on that note. I pray that God blesses you mightily. I pray that he is always with you. I pray that you are always with him. And I pray that if you aren't walking well with the Lord right now, that you redouble your efforts. If you aren't reading your Bible, open your Bible. Throw your mobile phone away. Start reading a paper Bible. You can't understand the Bible by using an electronic device. The amount of years that I've been teaching, and you ask people to turn to a particular page or verse in the Bible, and they have no idea how or where to find it. Why is that? Well, now it's even worse. Mobile devices are dumbing down our faith. People don't know how to navigate the Bible. You have no context. So let's get rid of our devices. Let's spend more time in relationship with one another. Let's spend more time in relationship and prayer with the Lord. Let's spend more time reading our Bibles. Let's spend more time teaching one another. Let's spend more time discipling our fellow people. Let's spend more time equipping each other. And let's walk together as a body of Christ in the way that we're intended to. Lord, I just pray that this word has touched people. I give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Pastor Paul.